The aim of this presentation is to share insight about the current state of affairs in my photographic project. It's going to be focused on ecosystems and how ecosystems affect everything we do and how our economy is underpinned and influenced by ecosystems. We will start by uh, exploring some of the sources of inspiration for this project. The first image comes from Jan Artus Bertran, a French photographer and the author of the famous book The Earth View from Above. We see how well he is able to represent the beauty of fragile ecosystems that are in need for protection at the moment. The second image comes from James Barlock, the author of the Extreme Ice Survey, a project where he uh, catalogued and, and um, the photographed how the glaciers are melting around the world in real time, a very important contribution to uh, spreading the message on climate change. The next example is from Edward Butinsky, uh, and this image depicts uh, a man-made river of nickel tailings in Canada, and is really a call for action to rethink our production and consumption activities and to reduce our impacts on this planet. The next image comes from David Meisel and uh, his lake project, where he explored how human activities are affecting the state of affairs in one of the lakes in the United States. Finally, the winner of this year World Press Photo Award, photographer Perez, who captured this shocking image of a turtle completely caught in plastic fishing nets off the coast of Tenerife. There's currently about 260 million tons of plastic in the world's ocean, and this problem needs urgent attention. Now, I will continue with a, a short series of images uh, focused on the cultural um, ecosystem services, the ways in which ecosystems are able to educate, inspire, and create knowledge, uh, both directly and indirectly. In this series, um, which was entirely shot in Oxford during the live performances of jazz musicians, some of whom are my friends, we clearly see how the use of natural materials in musical instruments can create uh, a much larger value than the value of the instruments themselves. And this value uh, transcends boundaries and stops being um, economic and financial. It becomes cultural and spiritual and uh, educational. It was a particularly interesting uh, challenge to get so close to the musicians and to explore uh, how they work and how their hands move um, and for that I used a very very special set of lenses which were made by Carl Zeiss in East Germany and they're also recycled which adds to the uh, project. So you can see some really really rarely seen uh, glimpses of um, frames caught in the process of making a jazz improvisation. A little bit of different musical instruments, musicians focusing on improvisation, the hands, compositions. I have to emphasize the importance of the um, the color and the visual elements uh, of the composition in this series, they were all very, very carefully composed and um, selected from a really wide range of images that are shot initially. My hope is that this series is going to be able to really communicate the message about the important aspect of um, contribution from ecosystems through music to us. In the next section I will show briefly the images that were exhibited recently at the United Nations Conference on Climate Change and this series of five images uh, is called Magical Realism. It was shot in Colombia, one of the most biodiverse countries on this planet, uh, in um, an analog format using a Hasselblad camera and the idea is that 
these images could inspire and call for attention on um, biodiversity, the issue that is very often completely neglected. So in this image, for example, on the left-hand side, you can see the virgin forest, which was kept intact. On the right-hand side, on the other hand, all the forest has been cleared for agriculture. And the only trees that are still standing are these beautiful palm trees. And they're standing there just because human um, humans have understood that they were of direct economic value. Their sap was useful to produce candles. It is unfortunate that uh, focusing on only one dimension of a complex ecosystems, uh, the civilizations that lived there were able to completely destroy the natural environment. And this, in a way, could be a warning to all of us that this could happen, indeed, to all of us if we only focus on the direct economic value of nature. The Environment Europe um, think tank that I have founded has reached out to 52 countries in our executive education program in ecological economics. And we're sincerely hoping that we'll be able to use environmental photography as a creative fundraising tool to support our educational activities. In the next section, I will show some of the examples of how we're using social media channels to um, share um, the visual inspiration from our work. So the first one is the Instagram channel. As you can see, about 300, 400 followers and uh, regular uploads from new photo shoots. Uh, the WordPress blog that is easily accessible from the main website, stanislav.photography, where I review environmental documentaries, books, um, photo exhibitions, and also write about my own work. The Twitter channel, which has now about 1,100 followers and uh, is growing, is a good way to reach a wider audience with information on um, environmental photography. Uh, finally, uh, the new channel for me, uh, which is called Pinterest, a very useful way to collect uh, sources of inspiration, um, references, and also my own uh, work arranged thematically uh, by country and by topic, both in photography and paintings. And finally, my great pride, the new website that's been launched a few months ago, uh, Stanislav.photography. You're more than welcome to explore it, to uh, share it, and to follow uh, our work on social media channels that are provided in the upper left-hand corner of the website. Many thanks for your attention.